Thank you for joining me today to learn more about job costing in Sage Intact. I'm starting off by looking at a project performance dashboard. This is a dashboard that gives me a lot of information about the project in my company. From this dashboard, I can see contract amount, project estimate. This could come from the primary estimate that I've set for the job. Sage Intact can then calculate gross profit percentage. It can also pull in commitments, what's been billed so far, total cost, giving me a lot of components of a typical WIP report. What's great about this dashboard is I can drill down into these details. So if I would like to see more about the commitments, what has been committed on this job, I can simply drill into this dollar value. It takes me into the ledger that the commitments have been posted to, and then I can drill all the way back and see the commitments that were posted against this project. With a couple of clicks, I can see a full list of commitments and what their current status is. From here, if I want to do something, convert this into a accounts payable invoice, I could do it. Or maybe I want to drill in and view more detail about one of these commitments. But we're going to take a look at those in a minute. I can then drill back out to my dashboard and maybe perhaps drill into something else. Maybe I want to look at cost. Well, I can drill in here. Again, it takes me into my general ledger and allows me to drill all the way back to transactions so I could see accounts payable invoices and I could tell if something's been paid. But let's dive a little bit deeper into the project. So I'm going to go in to take a look at one of my projects in here. When I first come into my list of projects, I can see them listed out. Now, if I have any hierarchies, meaning that I've got a parent project with children projects, I would be able to see any of those relationships here. This sample company does not have this. I'm quickly able to view and sort these projects by status or by type. I'm going to drill into a particular project. So we'll take a look at this uh, hotel here. So I'm going to go and look at, click on the view. This will drill me down into some detail. From my job information screen, I'm going to see the relationship if there was a parent project. I also can view those categories and, and job types, again, allowing me to use these dimensions to sort and filter future reports. We're going to be able to tell if this project has been started or not. Yet again, another category I can utilize for sorting reports. Maybe I want to see only projects that have started or those that are completed. If I've built any business rules around this particular project, this would show here. And I have my familiar chatter that if I want to make any comments or updates, I can record that here. Moving over to my additional information tab, I'm going to see the progress of the job. Now, we're not going to get into billing today, but this is going to be used in billing. Now, we can then see what type of billing this project is set up as. This is a fixed fee, but I can also do percent of completion, a time and materials job, or even a milestone billing project. My job summary screen is going to give me some financial summary information, letting me see how much I've spent in key categories like labor, subcontracts, also what I've billed so far, what my margin is, and then view the same information on the budget. Summary of budgeted billings, um, other costs. If I am utilizing hours, because if I am recording time to the job, I'd be able to see what's been recorded so far. A lot of good summary information, again, I can access right from this job screen. Next, we'll take a look at cost code. This is gonna be our work breakdown structure that we're utilizing for this project. So I'm going to be coding to a particular project. Now, if I had a parent job, I may be coding to the parent and then the sub job. But in this example, this is just that it does not have a parent job. Beneath that, I'm going to see the cost codes that are spelled or designated for this particular project. Now, this is where I can update the percent complete. Again, this could be used in reporting. So if I did want to see percentage of completion, I would be able to pull percent complete from this field, the screen. Next, my estimate tab is where I'm going to store my budgets. 
Now I'm going to edit this so we can take a look at it. Notice I have two project, two project estimates for this job. So as this particular project works its way through the project cycle, I may have an initial project and maybe a forecast that I'm using. I can have as many different types of estimates and use them in different ways. Now some examples would be a traditional comparing a budget against my actual cost. But I can also forecast out you know, changes to my budget that I could layer on top of a project. So I would be able to view an original estimate, changes to the estimate, and then a revised estimate. I could also do a forecasted budget. I've got all these different scenarios that I can build. And with Intact, I'm really limited, not limited by um, any restrictions because I can build the different types of estimates I want to categorize them at. I can just then decide which one's the primary one that I'm going to use on a day to day basis. But I have the ability to pull these into different reports. So taking a look at the entries on the screen, I see that same work breakdown structure that I saw from my cost codes. Now these cost codes are designed by you. You can import a list of cost codes, perhaps the ones that you're currently using. Beyond the cost code, we can break down this cost further and looking at the cost type and even a cost item. Now on this estimate screen, I'm seeing the quantities and unit rates and amounts. So this is how my budget is put together. Now I can come into the screen and add in individual line items if I choose, but I also have the option to import my estimate. And we'll take a look at that screen. So now that my budget has been put together, we're going to be able to use it for reporting. Now I can import my budget. And Sage gives me the ability to create a template. So let me drag this template over here onto the screen. So this is the template that um, Sage lets me export. It's got all my columns with descriptions of what needs to be put in here, telling me if a column is required or not, giving me all the details, all the rules and requirements, and then I can populate it with all my information, the cost code, the dollar amounts. Then I can utilize the import tool back here on my job estimate screen to import that estimate in, either just the estimate or the estimate with the work breakdown structure. Now, I got to that estimate before by going through the job screen, but if I want to manage and look at all the estimates I have out in the system, I can view this from my job estimate screen. So here's a list of all the estimates that are out there and kind of what the status of them, which ones are primary estimates, um, what type of estimates are they, and totals. Now we've got our budget set up. Next, we'll want to start to enter in some commitments. Our commitments can be found under the purchasing module. In the purchasing module, we can do purchase order type commitments for materials or subcontract commitments for contracts. If we take a look at a purchase order, we can view a purchase order that's already been created. I'll go ahead and drill into this one for door and glass distributors. On my purchase order screen, I'm going to see the vendor it's for. I can see the status of it. It's showing it's pending. I can see any posting details, where it was posted to, not only the account. I can also view the history of it. So as this gets converted over into an accounts payable invoice, I'm going to see when it was, I can see back when it was originally, purchase order was originally created. And then once it's been converted, there'll be a new entry to tell me when it was converted. So I'll be able to get to either side of the entry, meaning if I'm in the accounts payable entry, I'd be able to go back and look at the purchase order. Or if I was in the purchase order as I am and the AP invoice had been entered, I'd be able to get to it. Now, if we had some workflow for approvals, I would also be able to see the approval history. Here I can drill in and see the approval history of when it was approved and by whom. 
But back to the details of my purchase order. As I scroll down, I can see the job, the cost code, the cost type that it was coded to, and the amounts. Now from here, I can choose to print or email this purchase order directly out of the system. Or if I'm ready to enter in my payable, I can go right into doing that from the screen. Under my more actions, I can choose to convert this purchase order into an accounts payable invoice. So if we do that, it's going to take me into my vendor invoices screen, bringing in all of the details of the purchase order. So I don't have to rekey anything. Over comes the vendor's name, the details of where it's coded to, and all I have to do is put in my invoice number. Now that I've got everything keyed in, I can go ahead and submit this. Here I see my newly entered accounts payable invoice. Let's go take a look at it again really quickly because I want to see, I want to show you how the history has now been updated. So if I now go look at the history, I'm going to see here was our original purchase order that was created back in August. And here today, we entered in our accounts payable invoice. So it, I also see the path of how it came to be. It came from this purchase order and then became an accounts payable invoice. Now we also have subcontracts. So if we look at our subcontracts, they're going to have similar functionality. I'm going to take a look at this Jackson Heating and Air subcontract. So if I again view this subcontract, I can see details up here. I've got the same history and posting details tab. As I scroll down, I can see the contract amount. Now, Looking at the history, I see that we've already applied one invoice, so it's been partially partially converted. So they did maybe they submitted a payment application to us, and so we paid them or entered in a payable for a portion of this invoice. Now, if we drill into our vendor record, we can see some important details that would pertain to the construction. And that would be our retainage. So here on my vendor screen is where I can set up what I want that retainage to default to deducting for this vendor. So I'm in my subcontract. I've reviewed it. Again, I can choose to email this directly out of here by clicking print or email. And I can also convert it much like I could on my purchase order. So let's go up to more actions and let's look to convert this to a vendor invoice. Just like the purchase order, it brought over all the details. It shows my remaining balance because if you remember, my accounts payable, excuse me, my subcontract was for 300 some thousand dollars, but I'm only going to be billing them out for, a, or only receive an invoice for a portion of that. So we'll put in what we want our price to be. So maybe we got an invoice for $120,000. We can then enter in, if it's different, our retainage, and now it's going to calculate the retainage amount. I can enter in our invoice number from our subcontractor, and I can go ahead and submit this. Now again, if I drill back into my accounts payable invoice, I can see the amount that was held in retainage and the original invoice amount. So if we go back to our accounts payable, excuse me, our project dashboard, we can start to see our projects move or the changes that we just made. So I'm going to update this date with today. Move this forward into October and apply this. And if we drill into some of our costs, I can see transactions that have occurred. 
Here's that invoice we just entered for that 120,000 show up in my detail. Some other invoices that I've entered also today. I can take this information and begin to build out additional reports. Maybe I want to see project profitability, really focus on just a particular project, seeing all the detail. Or I could expand this further, utilizing cost codes and cost types. Just depends on the level of detail I wish to see. Maybe a graph or chart is something I prefer to compare my budget to actual and see where I am in the progress of the project. Sage Intact also utilizes our interactive custom report writer. Some custom reports that we've built are our cost overview. Now my cost overview report, I can run by a particular job. Now, maybe I want to start this job at a higher level. I can bring up, roll up these transactions. I can sort them in different ways. Notice as I change these arrows, I'm reorganizing the report. I can do that by just simply clicking on the detail and it reorganizes the report for me. Now this is a report I like. I can choose to add it to my dashboard or perhaps memorize the, the modifications I've made to it. I can flip through and look at different reports all with on the same screen. More reports can be built out using our interactive custom report designer whether it's looking at our project estimate is another example of a report. Utilizing the interactive report writer is a great way to build out project reports or as many users prefer just to go to the project dashboard and review the information. This has been an overview of job costing in Sage Intact.